This is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoint. Now, your host, James Just. And thank you for joining me today. With me today is W. Bruce Lee from the Sac president of the Sacramento Taxpayers Association. We're here to talk about Measure A and why it is or isn't good policy. I told you my cat was going to make an appearance. Ah, well, okay. <laughs> Oh, your cat and my canary will get along just fine. Oh, that's going to be a great combination. We've got Tom and Jerry around here. That's yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, speaking of Tom and Jerry, right, uh, these, these people who put together these measures might as well be Tom and Jerry, right? Well, you know, well, they're, they're calculating, and, and they're, not, they're not dumb people, but they're doing it for their reasons and not for the reasons of the average citizen or the voter. But it comes out with the Tom and Jerry type of proposal. Yeah, that's so. Who are this coalition? Let's start. Well, first, let's back up. Let's start with what exactly is Measure A? What do they claim it does? It's going to do, and what is it that you think it's going to actually ultimately do? Okay. Well, you know, Measure A is a half percent sales tax countywide to Sacramento County, and to be used for uh, quote transportation uh, purposes. And this was the same measure, nearly the same measure back in 2016 that was voted down by the citizens. And then it came back in 2022 uh, with a f slight amendment. And uh, during the process of review by the Sacramento Transportation Authority and uh, analysis and, uh, and the Sacramento Taxpayers Association, SACTAX, led an opposition campaign even at that time and, and that included groups like the uh, NAACP, the National Action Network and others because a sales tax is highly regressive and it's by its design, its nature, impacts lower income, uh, middle income much more than others. And But in this process, uh, the Sacramento Transportation Authority decided to withdraw the measure back in 2020. And then uh, at the end of uh, 2021, uh, the proposal came back again. And there was a reason for this because there's a loophole that had been uh, created tentatively by the courts, which would allow such a measure to only need a majority vote rather than the required two thirds vote as required in Prop 13, the Proposition 218, et cetera. And so you have developers who thought, well, aha, you know, we can sneak this through this loophole. And matter of fact, they're doing this in several parts of the state very quickly because that loophole will not exist for potentially a long, you know, for, for much longer. Uh, and at that point, what they did back in uh, the late uh, 2021, they said, well, let's bring our one big project that we want to have uh passed by the voters which is the connector between uh highway 99 and highway 50 the southeast connector as it's called and uh so they and, and that was part of the 2020 proposal also uh but then in the spring of 2022 i think people got a little greedy they said, well, hey, let's add this and let's add that. And so they added a total of 26 projects that were not previously uh, part of the, of the program. Now, and then the reason I, let me give you a little background. SACOG, the Sacramento Area Council of Governments, covering six counties, has worked for decades to create a reasonable, understandable uh, development program for all six counties including transportation and how to have sustainable infrastructure and meet uh, uh, greenhouse gas emission goals and things of this nature. And I must compliment them. It has been very well thought out, very well planned, a lot of analytics that have gone into the process. Uh, and what this proposal does, Measure A, is with no particular analysis at all, it says well, we're going to do these 26 new projects in addition to the SACOG plan. And that's one of the reasons you have such so many people up in arms and a, a very unique coalition, because the coalition opposing this uh, is not just taxpayers, but it is environmental groups, uh, Sierra Club, uh, Save the River, uh, the American River. Oh, I got a whole list here, man. I, I, 
let's see what we have. Okay, we've got uh, Sacramento Transit Writers, uh, League of Women uh, Voters, uh, Environmental Democrats of Sacramento County, Sacramento Republican Party, the County Republican Party, American River Democrats, Libertarian Party, uh, Town and Country Democratic Club, and you even have people like, uh, along with Citizens Climate Lobby and Climate Plan, you have uh, uh, Heather Fargo, the former mayor of Sacramento. And you have others uh, such as uh, uh, Katie uh, Value, Value I'm mispronouncing her name. My apologies to Katie. Uh, values, help me out. <laughs> <laughs> Valens- oh, oh, don't ask me to help you out on pronouncing your name. I will butcher, <laughs> I can butcher any name. So, who's, a, <laughs> who's a current member of the, the Sacramento City Council and a, a host of others, including, and, and, and this I think is very telling, Mike McKeever. A recently, somewhat semi recently retired executive officer of SACOG who is vehemently opposed to this, who knows all the inner workings, he knows all the actors, he all knows all the imaginations that are, that are going on to uh, basically pull the wool over the other voters' eyes. Uh, so that's that's measure A, it's it's a, a, a half percent for 40 years sales tax. So this sales tax will continue for a long time, uh, even even you know when the good Lord calls me home, and um, uh, so, and we and there, there there are many obvious reasons, and then some not so obvious mega reasons why this is a, a trickster proposal and not good for Sacramento County. Yeah, I've seen this in my own neighborhood where they've got these forty-year proposals. I, I live near this. Uh, um, the Aggie Square, the new Aggie Square development, and they've set this whole thing up, this 40 years development zone. I forget exactly what they called it, but that's they put in there. Yeah. And so so now that Aggie Square development gets pays their own taxes on the zone, but they get to use their own taxes. So it's like you're paying your you're taking money from your left pocket and putting it in their right pocket. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's this really goofy thing. And but it's kind of the same thing. They're setting it up as so long, such a long commitment that you you're stuck with it. Oh right? yeah, forty years. You're, we're all yeah. stuck with it. And 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 one of the problems we have right now is Sacramento and California are already uh, plagued by excessive taxation. Uh, we have the highest sales tax rates in the nation. You know, people are fleeing the state, uh, going to other places, and uh, this type of uh, tax is really. Uh, hurts the disadvantaged and, and the middle class the most. And now we're in you know, massive inflation, you know, uh, the, the worst in 40 years. Uh, who knows how that may may occur. Or coming off the heels of a pandemic, you still have many small businesses who have not reopened, many, many that have not reopened, who are struggling to survive. Uh, and it was recently reported that as many as one third of all SMUD customers are either behind or have stopped paying their SMUD, uh, SMUD bills at all. And then, uh, you know, it, it doubles the countywide transportation tax. And uh, and again, this is and it is regressive, which I, I think I mentioned already, why you had previously working with SAC tax when you led the coalition, National Action Network, NAACP. Saying, you know, no, this is not good, and this is this is why we've uh, bannered the campaign. Uh, you know, Measure A, not okay. Uh, but that's that's one of the first and most obvious reasons for for being quite concerned about the tax. Yeah. Well, so, so, what are some of the more the less obvious reasons? Well, you know, okay. I think we all, you know, for those of us like me, hey, it's a half cent sales tax. I'm against it just on principle, right? We already pay an insanely amount of tax. So I don't have to dig to the details. No, they have more money than they need, right? They're, they're, they're spending it on their, their friends of it's, I call it the various industrial complexes. It works just like Eisenhower's uh, military industrial complex, whether I, it's the homeless industrial complex or the, the educational industrial complex or name your, name your government program. You know, it's like they have more than enough money. They just spend it terribly. And well, so, yeah, there's huge government waste in general. And uh, government is not incentivized to be effective and efficient with its dollars. Uh, and there's a lot of systemic issues there. But at the same time, you know, frankly, uh, James, for a lot of governmental leaders, uh, when they see a budget, 
and it's 80 million or 80 billion. It's just big numbers on a piece of paper. They have no particular re-election. How does this impact uh, my citizens? How does this impact my economy? And so they're thinking in isolation and uh, they're just sort of going along with the process. But uh, the second mega reason that's sort of how it's sort of a trickster thing is this whole thing is labeled as a quote, you know, citizens initiative, right? But as further from the fact is that, you know, you really have uh, uh, an initiative that's been ramrodded by uh, developers and uh, uh, construction companies and labor in that regard. So, you know, the, back in uh, uh, 1996, when you had Proposition 218 passed, it confirmed that special taxes needed a two-thirds vote by the citizens. Okay, now there's a little bit of a backstory of how this whole thing began, but the backstory simply is this. Uh, there were some, prop some proposals in San Francisco and Oakland and Fresno. Uh, in, in one particular proposal in San Francisco, uh, well, it, it did not pass. It did not make the two-thirds threshold. And it was, it was appealed, and, and the Supreme Court opined in 2017, the California Supreme Court, that, you know, they might be open to listening to a, rather than a government initiative, which, which the most measures come from, the local government sponsors it. If it was a citizen initiative, maybe they might exercise a little more grace and, you know, about this two-thirds requirement. So that's what happened, and that's how the whole thing developed. And there was a race on at that time. Uh, and so, and interesting enough, uh, there were a couple of proposals in San Francisco. Uh, one had to do with dealing with the homeless and uh, taxing uh, commercial buildings and various things like that. One had to do with ch child care, I think. And the early education thing passed by 50.87%, just passed that, that uh, majority threshold. And then uh, that was appealed, and the Supreme Court said, no, we're not going to hear it, because the appellate court said, well, okay, a citizen's initiative, 50%, that's all right. Uh, so the Supreme Court said they would not hear it. And, but interesting enough, James, the same type of matter uh, which occurred in Fresno and which occurred in Oakland, where they had a majority citizen's initiative passed, the court struck it down saying, no, the two-third requirement is a legitimate requirement and it needs to be maintained. But that was the loophole that was open for developers. Now, back to Measure A here, what you have is the committee for, quote, a better Sacramento proposed this, this whole measure, and they had to go out and get citizens, quote, to sign the, the ballot. And if you look at that committee, uh, which is basically a labor and construction organization that's run by uh, Clinton Myers, a builder, builder and road uh, repair company, uh, Joseph Cruz. And these are all nice people. He's the exec director of the California State Council of Laborers and a lobbyist. And thirdly, a Mike Quigley, who's the executive director of the California Alliance for Jobs, representing about 2,000 heavy construction companies. And the top funders of this whole thing are Angelo Sacophilus, again, a nice guy, Mike Quigley's organization, and Cordova Hills Development, which has been pushing for the connector between 50 and 99 for some time. But what they did was, and this is where I take on, you know, onus of the concept that this is a citizen's initiative. Well, one, the sponsors are not representative of the citizens. Secondly, they spent $1.7 million to qualify the, uh, the measure. They spent on average twenty-one dollars and twenty-five cents per signature. Uh, so this is this is a bought and paid for uh, proposal by developers and contractors. It's not a citizen's initiative, not at all. And we don't want to be fooled by that. And and anyone who wants access to the public records can go look up those facts. So that's 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 my next mega point. It's not a citizen's initiative. It is clearly a, a commercial. Uh, and I, I'm not against commercial development. I'm not against, you know, these types of things. But this, they're going through a judicial loophole trying to sneak one by at a majority vote rather than a two-thirds vote. 
Yeah, it'd be one thing if you were honest about it, right? Say, hey, we want to do this. Let's go through the process. Let's follow the proper process. And then we can actually have a discussion on whether the terms of the of the proposals are valid, good, long-term discussion. But if you're going to try to approach these themes from a, uh, shall we say, a manipulative way, we'll use the word yeah, manipulative fair. way, then you have to be overly skeptical about what they're actually trying to accomplish. Well, right? yeah. And, and, and I think we're going to see, as we continue the discussion, what they are trying to accomplish. Uh, and one of the wonderful things about having your own citizens initiative, if you can afford $1.7, $1.8 million, I mean, I could put, or you could put anything in the ballot. And the marvelous thing about that, you don't have to have any public hearings, no public debate, no citizen input, no, is this reasonable or not reasonable? I just, you know, I can... Anything I can dream of, I can put on the ballot. So the, the, the third mega point, uh, James, and here's where you really get to the crux of the matter in terms of why are the developers doing this. At its core, Measure A is a land use proposal. It's not a transportation initiative. The proposal overrides decades of planning, as I mentioned, by the Sacramento Area Council of Government, SACOG, that includes Sacramento and five other counties, uh, with a laundry list of all these special things they want to do. And the list of transportation projects, pretty much just window dressing, because they don't care about, you know, rapid transit. They don't care about this. They don't care about that. They simply want to open up a whole new swath of land uh, for mega development. Uh, and so, as I said, you know, Measure A has these 26 new capacity building projects that are not included in the 2020 SACOG Metro Transportation and Sustainable Community Strategy. And that's why you have like Mike McKeever and others, a retired executive of SACOG, you know, really just up in arms about this whole thing. Uh, so this is going to change the basic locations of new housing and employment throughout the region. And rather than doing infill and things of this nature, it's going to be the, the typical sprawl that we've had for decades, the same sprawl you've seen in Los Angeles and in much of San Francisco and things of this nature, uh, which will change the land use forecast and travel patterns and increase per capita vehicle miles traveled. Now, one of the interesting things about doing all this, and again, this proposal, anybody can with 1.8 million can come up, put something on the ballot, no analysis. This proposal is going to cause us to miss our mandated 2035 greenhouse gas reduction goals, which leads to the next objection, uh, which is indeed that Measure A aggravates climate change. It doesn't prevent climate change, again, as the proponents would argue. And uh, by missing our 20, 2035 uh, climate goal requirements, we are going to be losing billions of dollars in transportation and local housing that comes from the feds and the state. Uh, and along with this, you know, the American Lung Association has consistently uh, ranked Sacramento in the top 10 most polluted cities primarily due to our air quality. So those those are some of the reasons, you know, I, I really want that connector built so I can open up ag land now and build on there, et cetera, because I have a ways to get to there. And that means the average commute by an individual who's traveling to work is going to be longer, et cetera, et cetera. But that's, and, and I, you know, I, again, I'll point out, you know, the proponents did no analysis on this at all. And actually, SACOG, back in uh, April and May, did a revised analysis saying, what's the impact of Measure A? And they had three or four universities, UC uh, staff and others working on this. And the staff report came back and clearly said, this is not hocus pocus. We are going to miss our our uh, greenhouse gas emission goal. This is the analytical impact of it. So it's not, you know, uh, she said, he said type thing. I mean, there's, 
And that's caused great alarm in Sacramento local government at that time, which leads into some of the next major problems with the initiative. Yeah, well, you know, you're talking to, for me, when you get to this meeting, these mandated goals from the state, you're talking for, you're, you're going, uh, the whole thing is frustrating for me because you've got these imposed goals essentially by writ, right? You got the governor yeah. just decided, hey, we're going to create these goals that now we have to live by. And I, so I'm trying not to just sort of separate the two issues in my own personal head because that, I understand. because a lot of this, a lot, what people call sprawl, I, I see is that's the way people want to live. And so it's, a, it's the opportunity, it's the job of government to respond to the government and builders and whatnot to respond to the way people want to live. And if people want sprawl, well, it's our job as politicians and to give them sprawl. And that's clearly what they've wanted. And the over the over planning, the government over planning has caused our, oh, shall we say, housing market issues in California, right? We, there's those two things are related. And so mm -hmm. how the, all that balances out. So. So I don't want any misconstrue mis anything. I am way against measure A. So that's, <laughs> it's just some of these arguments for me personally, I, they're frustrating from a, from the libertarian perspective. They're frustrating. I, I, I accept them. But and I, and I, 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 I well agree. And this is why you have such a wide variety of arguments. So yeah. we're coalescing this very unique coalition and uh, you have these greenhouse uh, gas emission goals. Uh, by the uh, California Air Resources Board, uh, CARB. And, you know, and they're the ones that are now looking at, well, maybe we should not have, uh, you know, gasoline vehicles. You know, we got it all electric and, you know, all that type of stuff. And so it's very easy for government to overstep its role, you know. Yeah, well, I, I'm all for hydrogen, the new hydrogen vehicles. I, I want us to go the hydrogen way. I just, it seems to me that we've now got it figured out. And so we're we're going batteries is dumb, but you know that's a whole that's a whole different discussion. <laughs> Another TV show. Yeah, yeah, that's a whole different discussion. So we, you say you've got five. So what's your? I think you've got one more more point, and we've got what five minutes. So. Oh, okay. I mean, well, great. We're doing good on time then. You know, the, 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 the fifth reason is this: is that Measure A is flawed in its very design. When the develop and the developers in their rush, hey, let's get this on the ballot, man. You know, we're gonna not just have one project; we're gonna get twenty six of these things on here, and uh, and then when SACOG did the analysis and they came back and said, hey, we all oh, we you know, there's problems in River City here, that created quite a stir. Oh no, what are we going to do now? Now, frankly, under reasonable public policy, you might say, well, hey, let's pull this proposal back. Let's rework it. Let's recraft it, you know, et cetera. But at the same time, they're going, son of a gun, I've already spent $1.7, $1.8 million getting all these signatures, you know, and uh, they're looking at, you know, no, nothing wrong with profit, but they're looking at the profit motive rather than the tax issues and all these other things. And they're basically looking for taxpayers to fund them, you know, and to make life easier for them in that regard. So in this process of uh, uh, failing to correct and refile the initiative, they said, oh, God, my gosh, what are we going to do? We have this surgical problem. We have a, you know, a stab in the, in the chest here uh, of, of, of major proportion. And they, they pulled out a Band-Aid solution to cover this stab in the chest. And, that, and, and it, again, this is all smoke and mirrors. They come up and they said, well, we're going to have this memorandum of understanding, you know, that uh, we're all going to be good now, right? You hear? And we're all going to, you know, keep to our promises. And actually, there are no promises. And uh, so this, and you'll see even in the ballot argument, they make reference to this formal agreement, this MOU, memorandum of understanding. Now, here, here are the main points here. One, a memorandum of standing has little weight legally. Uh, the three parties that were supposed to sign, only two signed. So you have the Transportation Authority, you have SACOG, and the JPA connector, Joint Power Authority, connector between five and, and uh, not five, but Highway 99 and, and Highway 50. They refuse to sign, which means they're not, you know, even morally compelled to, you know, to comply with the MOU. And 
memorandums of understanding, they come and they go. And in this particular memorandum, it's clear it's amendable. It can be amendable the day after the vote. There's nothing in there that says this is has, you know, the weight of law. So what, what you do have is, is uh, yeah, memorandums of understanding have no weight of law, but the actual initiative itself has the clear weight of law. So that's why I refer to that as a, as a Band-Aid on a surgical stab in the heart uh, type of problem. So Measure A, at its worst, is ballot box land use. You've heard of ballot box budgeting, which is sort of goofy at times and screwed up. But this is ballot box land use uh, at its worst. And the developers are getting taxpayers to pay for their problems, in essence. Yeah, and that's... A and that's a growing problem, right? Nobody, I think nobody left or right or libertarians really like taxpayers funding, funding businesses, but yet it happens all the time. <laughs> that's, it's just so strange. Well, and, and, and that is, that's an appropriate, you know, and the reason SAC tax exists is that why SAC tax, the abbreviation Sacramento Taxpayer Association, you know, our whole purpose is to give taxpayers the opportunity to exercise ownership over their own, own government. And, and we're a nonpartisan organization, uh, and we believe in the, uh, the right to limited taxation, the right to uh, vote on tax increases, uh, the right that the, there should be economical, equitable, and efficient use of tax dollars, which is a, a real problem, and that there should be high levels of transparency in our government. And, and, and that's, that is our purpose. And uh, for, so for several reasons, uh, this was an easy measure for a SAC tax to uh, review and say, wow, this, this fails on several, several points. Yeah, I know it was easy for us. I can speak for the Libertarian Party on this one. It was easy for us to, to oppose, too. It, it wasn't even a question. <laughs> yes, yes, that, no. Just, you know, some of us, oh, it's a tax increase. No, we don't have to read any farther than that, right? <laughs> And some of us are more issued, interested in processes, and and so it's you know no the it was an easy it was an easy no this one we cannot support and we, easy oppose it was an easy oppose let me put it that way yeah and so we've got thirty seconds people can find you at uh, www.measureanotok.org and and if, and if they wanted to learn about the Sac the Sacramento Taxpayers Association, they can go to. I didn't put a I didn't put the screen, but I'll put it on the description later. www.sacramentotaxpayers.com. Thank you for coming, Bruce. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Hopefully, hey. we'll get you back on here a few times, maybe in the studio. We'll get you in the studio. We'll get you to sit down and talk some future uh, some future Sacramento issues. That'd be fun. That my canary will not be chirping in the background. <laughs> oh, the studio is a fun experience. And so you can watch us on, on Public Access Channel 17, 8 o'clock uh, Thursdays. And from that, I want to thank you for joining us. Thank you for watching us. And from all of us here at Libertarian Counterpoint, please remember to love everybody. Bye.